Welcome to the study of the English legal system. My name is Rebecca Huxley-Benz and I'm one of the authors of the textbook Unlocking the English Legal System. It's always been my view that vital knowledge is passed in the study of the English legal system because it explains the common law tradition and it explains the way that we pass our laws in a democratic system. It is also vital for you to have a deep understanding of this area of process and procedure so that you can later develop a deep understanding of the substantive and core subjects. As you'll see from your slide in the introduction, we call this the study of the English legal system, but that also includes the Welsh legal system. England and Wales has the same legal system, although there is a degree of derogation down to Wales to pass their own laws now. We call it the English legal system, but it's not systematic in that it was designed to be a single system where people could resolve all legal disputes. In fact, the legal system is so steeped in history that an understanding of the historical context will help you to understand why the systems are as they are now. Although as you proceed through the 12 chapters of the book and these 12 videos, you will see that the system is ever-changing. Law and legal systems are very dynamic. We're going to look now at the sources of law. And the sources of law are vital because they tell us what the law is. What I mean by that is that there are lots of rules governing our behaviour. And a law from one of the sources of law, the common law, or an act of parliament, or even a European Union or convention law, is a law. All other rules may be good practice, it could be a rule of morality, or a rule of a club, or the rule of your parents, but it is not a law, and therefore the consequences of breaching it are very different. If we wanted to, we could spend some time doing a detailed examination of the difference between rules and laws. And that would take us outside this book and into an interesting study of jurisprudence or legal or political philosophy. But for now, we'll examine the sources of law. The second slide, 1.2, provides a simple overview of the sources of law. And as you will see, they have been separated into the domestic sources of law and the international sources of law. We'll start by looking at the domestic sources and we'll develop this in later slides. The first main source of law is Parliament, which passes legislation. And you will see from the text the importance of parliamentary supremacy, something that we'll look at a little later. The second of the domestic sources are the courts, where judges make the law and will be investigating their role throughout this text. There are at least two international sources of law to domestic law, but the two that feature here are of particular importance because they have direct impact or direct effect into English law. And those are the laws of the European Union and the European Convention on Human Rights. These are two separate sources of law and they're of often confused. We'll move now to 1.3, the courts. At this stage, it would be helpful if you familiarised yourself with figure 1.1 in the book. Start to get used to some of the names and the status of each of the courts in the hierarchy with the Supreme Court at the top, the Court of Appeal in the middle, and the more inferior courts below. This book will revisit that court hierarchy throughout and particularly for chapters one to six inclusive. And if you're able to understand the hierarchy of the courts, your understanding of the processes will be that much better. There is some key terminology for you to understand first. When we talk of courts of first instance, we're talking about courts of trial. This is where the case is first brought to court and it's usually where the facts of the dispute are settled by the fact finder. It could be a judge, magistrate or jury. We'll look at later in chapter 6 why we have an appeals system. 
but an appeals court, also known as an appellate court, is where the same case may, th may then, not always, but may be taken to a higher court. Usually, this won't be for a new hearing, it, may, it might very rarely be, but it will be to question the law as decided in that case at first instance.